And are you refreshed? Yes. Good. Now what? Thank you so much. I'm really appreciative of being here. And I, I really feel like this was the perfect time for me to be up here as a segue from what was just discussed. I am so passionate about what I've learned from you over the years. Many years ago, I created a process. It's a support group process that helps the people who are in it ask and then get into a place of receiving. So it is a process that we go around and we just, as we have our, our requests, then we each affirm to each other, I so see that for you. So it's helping people move into that place of believing that they can have what they're asking for. It helps them feel more worthy. And I have been in this, in a particular group that I started for like a dozen years. And I feel so powerfully drawn to teach this and to get it out there for people because I have seen what it has done for those of us who have been in the group. And I have recently, I've been waiting because I've seen myself doing this, and I've recently found a platform that I can do it online. And it's where we're video conferencing, and we're there for each other, and we're... So I, I just did teach like it once with uh, f the four of us online. And they're having wonderful responses to this. And these were people who were in different states, and having, feeling that connection to their inner being. That's the whole purpose of this, is helping people get that connection. How do you transfer or inspire with those with whom you're interacting? How do you transfer from their, dependency is too strong of word, but it's the right word, on the group, the support group? How do you help them morph from looking for human support to discovering inner support. The existence of the group almost defies that, and yet we know you're having success, so we're asking, how do they not become dependent upon you, and how do they not use you as support? How do they find their own internal support? They do that through the focus on appreciation. We start the process every time we come together with what are the things that you've noticed that have happened as a result? So when you enter the room, so to speak, your own connection is already in place. So you hold the others in an expectation of them finding that. Well, that is upliftment at its finest. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I have found already with these, the small number of people that I have taught that they're saying things like, I'm really beginning to become aware of the relationship I have with my inner being. And some started with, I'm uncomfortable asking. And as we go through this process, or they'll say, I feel selfish in asking. And I'll say, it's about that alignment. It's about that alignment with yourself and being that, that creative energy in the world. We're going to take you into a new place because you've tiptoed into it. And so we're going to explain it from our broader perspective. If you've been listening to us for a while or even today, you hear us talking about step one, two, three. Step one is variety and contrast causes you to ask. Step two is source is the answerer because source immediately lines up with what you're asking for and then broadcasts a energy stream of expectation, an energy stream of upliftment, an energy stream of knowing what you're asking for is, which is what you're talking about. And then step three is you, the step one -er, must find some way to be a vibrational match to what you're asking for. Now, you have heard that from us so many times that you could speak it yourself. We know that step one, two, three is borderline annoying. <laughs> but it is the way the universe works. Non-physical energy stands in that vibrational place, focused upon you and all that you've become even though you may not have let it in physically. Maybe your money hasn't come to you yet or your relationship hasn't come to you yet or your success in whatever hasn't come to you yet. But your inner being is not looking at that manifestation and needing it to be. Your inner being is looking at the components of what you're asking for, understanding the laws of the universe and holding steady to the desire that you hold. And so the expectation that your inner being is holding 
is really important to your equation. So then, as you care about how you feel, and you find yourself moving more and more into vibrational alignment with things that feel satisfying, with thoughts that feel good to you, so that you're holding really steadily there, then an interesting thing happens to you. Because you've been step one, and you know that source is step two, and now you're step three, but once you're consistently and steadily in alignment with all that you want, then you become a cooperative component that source can inspire, you might say utilize to be part of the step two equation for someone else's desire. Isn't that interesting? A friend was asking Esther as they were coming into the holidays about finding perfect gifts for people. And so they were talking about it a little bit. And it led Esther off into quite a bit of her own personal asking about the difference between giving and receiving in a setting like that. The difference between givers and takers, so to speak. She's heard people described as, well, that's a really giving person. or That person's not so giving. That's more of a taking person. And so Esther's got all these questions active in her mind. And so... We began talking to her about when you are in alignment with non-physical, then you are often inspired to be in the right place at the right time to answer the question that's being asked or to give the gift that is needed or whatever. So when you come into full alignment with who you really are, yes, you are in the receptive mode, but you are also in the inspired mode of giving. And so... This is a wonderful thing. This is why it is feeling so good to you. And the only emphasis that we would want to ever offer to anyone, because it does feel so good to give. And yet you must have heard us say on some occasions, sometimes when you give what you are saying to the one who is the receiver of your gift, I give this to you because I see you cannot find it yourself. I'm doing this for you because I see you cannot do it for yourself. And that is not the gift you mean to give. And so that's why coming into alignment, coming into that pure positive energy, and then dancing together is such a wonderful thing. Because sometimes someone else who doesn't have resistance about whatever you're asking for for yourself, you're asking for something that you don't believe. And you haven't believed it for a while. And even though you're asking it, you still don't believe it. And sometimes you can come together with others who are focused with you on your desire, who have no reason not to believe it. And their expectation can inspire you for a little while into your own alignment. But it is so important that you all understand that it's for a little while we are finding this place because your goal is to hook them up with what they know, not be the necessary component for them when they've really got it. And this is the thing that we like so much about your idea and the way it is playing out for you, is that when you are really in the receptive mode, then you are inspired to the giving. So there's no fakery going on. You're not telling someone, oh, I see you accomplishing that just because you think they need to be cheered up. Because you're really in the receptive mode and you really see it, they are much more likely to be able to flow with you on the energy of your expectation for a little while. And when I was teaching the course, I said to them, you're not going to understand any of this truly from these few hours together. It's going to be you experiencing this, you asking and you receiving and you asking and receiving. Again, that, that idea of experiencing it for themselves. What we would say to them in every meeting, whether it's the same group assembling or new ones coming in, come here and prime your pump. Get yourself in the mode of energy flow because the most wonderful thing about law of attraction is what you flow out comes right back to you. When you are feeling wonderful about something, you can't feel wonderful about it without offering a vibration that is your point of attraction. And so you're not only helping those to expect something that maybe they couldn't expect without the group, you all are practicing the giving and the receiving at the same time. And that's why it feels so good to you. That's why you feel so drawn to it. And, and good, really good. I've, so it it feels so strong. Yes. And, um, and, and right on. And it feels like, you know, the cooperative components have shown up. Yeah. You know, the format to do it. Yes. And, and even me being able to do it online in a format that I've never used before, it just went seamlessly yeah. for the most part. So I'm at this point of, I feel... Applying your own teaching to your own yes. desire. <laughs> yes. Have yes, fun with that. that's exactly where I am. Exactly. Yeah. 
How do I fun. reach those who can benefit, who are ready? Well, ask your group if they see you doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. They'll be good ones to ask too, because they found you. So it'll be easy for them to see you. Yeah. A lot of trouble in this room. 